What's up? So I want to share some life advice that I wish that I got and, and that I wish that I had when I was in my early 20s. And so in case you don't know, I'm about to be 40. And uh, actually, let's go in the other room. The dryer is kind of loud. All right, so I'm about to be 40 uh, just in two months. And there's a bunch of mistakes that I made really in my 20s, my early 20s, that have slowed down my growth, at least financially. And I wanna share these with you. So maybe if you're in your early 20s, high school, early college career, whatever it is. Um, I mean, you can still do this stuff even if you're older, older than that or, or older than me. But I wanna share this stuff with you so that hopefully it helps you and you don't make the same mistakes that I made. Okay, so number one is biggest mistake that I made was focusing on escaping reality. So now that we got the cat out of the way, this is what I mean by that. When I was younger, I used to just, I used to focus a lot on, on doing drugs and drinking. That was my way of escaping reality. I'm trying to feel better about my circumstances. There's a lot of different ways that people do this. I mean, it could be through doing everything, anything to the extreme, right? I mean, it could be, you could take something that's healthy, like going to the gym and do it to the extreme where you're like actually not going to work because you want to work out for eight hours that day. And you, like, this is an extreme example, but um, that's a form of escaping reality. It's like not doing the things that you're responsible for doing so that you can try to feel better. And an extreme example of this was drugs and alcohol. And so like in my extreme example, I ended up getting hooked, ended up ruling my life, ruling it and ruining it for, for years, years and years and years. And I'm not saying that that's what's gonna happen to everybody who uses drugs or alcohol, but the one thing that will happen no matter what is you will waste time. Even if you don't get hooked or addicted, you end up just wasting time and spending money to waste time. And so this is to help you financially in the future. And so I, I would recommend just not even doing that. You're not really missing out. All the things that you think that you're missing out on by not going out partying, by not going out to the club or going out to the bar, like you're not really missing out on stuff. You can go do it every now and then and then be like, okay. But like, like you can see what it is. I'm not saying don't do that, but like this is the advice that I would give my younger self. And that's like, don't even, don't even do any of that. Don't even do any of that. There's, there's so many benefits to not doing that. I'll just list some of them off really quick. Uh, you're able to think a lot clearer. You're able to just be sharper all throughout your day. I've noticed this now, especially after being three and a half years, almost four years, completely sober off everything except for some nicotine and some caffeine. Um, I can definitely tell a huge difference in how clear I can think on a daily basis um, and the energy levels that I have to be able to deploy to the things that I want to do. When I want to attack something, whether it's a goal or just going out surfing or whatever, like I have the energy to be able to do it mentally. Number two is making sure that compound interest is working in our favor. Making sure that compound interest is working in our favor. I say this because compound interest, whether you know it or not, is working in your life. And if you don't know it, it's probably working against you. For me, what I used to do is because I was drinking, doing drugs, partying a lot, not thinking about the future, I was never living below my means. And that's actually going to be the next one. It's living, living below our means. I wasn't doing that. And so no matter how much money I'd be making with whatever job I had, or when I was in the military, I was making a decent living. I, I still never had enough. I was always paycheck to paycheck and I would take out short term loans. I would borrow from people. Um, I would take out payday loans. I would use credit cards to help get me through. So what this essentially means is I, this is what I did. I wouldn't have enough money and I would say, okay, I'm going to have some more money coming in in a little bit. So let me make sure that I take some of that right now. I'm literally borrowing money from my future so that I can spend it right now on things that I didn't even really need. And what this led to, if, if you do this, like I did, when you have a fixed income, that means your income stays the same. Let's say you have a monthly salary and it's always the same. That's what I had when I was in the military is monthly salary. No matter how much I worked or didn't work, it was the same amount every month. And so when I borrow money like that or charge it up on credit cards, 
what I was essentially doing is saying, like, I'm okay with getting paid less later as long as I can have it now. And so this is an example of compound interest working against me. Somebody else is making money. Somebody else has compound interest working for them. Whoever I'm paying for these loans, they have compound interest working for them in this situation. But for me, it was the opposite. And it led me to being in a like deep financial hole where like, honestly, I've just been getting out of that now over the last four years, five years. And so set up compound interest to work in your favor. And here are some things that you can do to do that. Number one, do not take out any loans or credit cards or anything like that because you're struggling to make ends meet. If you feel like you can't make it paycheck to paycheck, don't borrow money to fill in that gap because you're really just digging a bigger hole for yourself in the future. And that hole is gonna to have to be filled in sooner or later. You can keep kicking the can down the road as many days as you like, but sooner or later, the bill's gonna come due. So just don't even do that. And what I would advise to do instead is look for ways that you can cut out your expenses. It's like, okay, like for me, it's like, I could have just asked myself, well, how come you don't, how come you never have any money, dude? And it's like, oh, well, you're spending it all on alcohol and drugs. So maybe just stop doing that. And then you won't need to borrow like money and have credit card debt and all this stuff. Right. And you know, for you, maybe if you, maybe it's a different example, maybe it's not something that that's, that's that extreme, but just make sure that you're living below your means. You're spending less than what you make. Look at your expenses, look at the money that comes in every month, look at what goes out every month, make sure the number that goes out every month is less than what comes in. And you do that and you're good to go. You don't need to borrow and you don't need credit cards to get by. And so next, once you're living below your means, you could actually start using compound interest in your favor. And there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. I mean, you can do this through, depending on where you work, you could do this through a 401k, you could do this through investing in the S&P 500, and you could do this with a high yield savings account. Just remember that if you think that just putting it, putting like extra money that you're saving in a checking account is going to have compound interest working in your favor, it actually doesn't. Maybe you get like 1% uh, interest every year for whatever's in your checking account or savings account, your regular savings account. But we also have to take into account inflation. Um, so every year inflation, it's, uh, and this is just off the top of my head. So if you want to get on Google and check what I'm going to say, don't expect this to be hundred percent correct, but it's like two to 3% um, inflation every year, at least lately. And so what that means is that if you're putting money in a checking account. And let's say that inflation is 3% every year. And of course it fluctuates and it's different. But let's say for this example, that inflation is 3%. What that means is that the cost of things are going up by 3% every year. So if inflation is going up every year and you have your money sitting parked in a checking account that gives you 3% interest every year, well, that essentially means that your interest is growing at the same rate as inflation, which means that the thousand dollars that you put in there, or let's say that you put like a hundred thousand dollars in there, right? And it's just sitting there for a year. Well, that means by next year, that would be a hundred and three thousand dollars. But if inflation is going up at 3% too, what this means is that that hundred and three thousand dollars that you have, it gives you the same purchasing power as the original 100,000. You can buy the exact same amount of stuff as you could with the original 100,000. So here's the point that I'm trying to make here. When you're setting something up to make sure that compounding interest is working in your favor, you have to make sure that the interest that you're earning is higher than the year over year inflation rate. So if that checking account was giving me 5% interest and inflation rate is 3%, that means that I'm actually getting, my money is growing by 2%. So there's a lot of different avenues that you can take 
to be able to set compounding interest up to work in your favor. It could be stocks, it could be bonds, it could be S&P 500. Uh, but you just wanna make sure that you're doing that. And it's gonna seem small, it's gonna seem like it's pennies in the beginning. This is why I wish I did this 20 years ago, but that's okay. We're setting up this habit so that it's going to keep growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. And uh, there's this uh, really cool thing that I've seen where it's like, would you rather, and, and you might've heard this before, but would you rather have somebody give you a million dollars today? Like right now, it's like, boom, they'll give you a million dollars. Or would you rather have somebody give you one penny today and it doubles the amount, and they give you, they give you one penny today and then they double it every day for the next 30 days. When I first heard that, I thought like a million dollars today, obviously. But the cool thing is, if you actually take that, somebody gives you one cent today, tomorrow they give you two cents. The next day they give you four cents. Then the next day they give you eight cents. And the next day they give you 16 cents. If you work all this through for the whole 30 days, it ends up being like 2.5 million and that's the power of compounding interest. At first, the first initial days, it seems like it's nothing. It's like, okay, two, one cent, then two cents, then four cents. But things, when things are growing exponentially, once, once the number becomes a bigger number and then the interest is gaining on that, that's when you have big returns. And this could take years to set up. So that's why you wanna have compounding interest working in your favor especially while you're young and definitely don't have it working against you. So the last thing and probably the most important is actually it's skill set development. It's acquiring and learning skills that help you become more valuable to the market. And so this is what my job history has looked like for the, since I was 18 years old. Right, so the last 22 years. And at first it was, I joined the military. I was an aircraft electrician. I did that for eight years. I was a really good mechanic. Then after that, I delivered laundry at a VA hospital. I was a janitor at a veterans hospital. I did that for like five years. Those two have nothing to do with each other, right? I'm totally separate skills. One really isn't even a skill. It's just like a job that anybody can do. Like pretty much almost minimum wage job, did that. But then I started getting into social media marketing, sales online, creating content. And that's where I really started to learn a skill that's valuable, that people can pay me for, that I could pay myself for, I could teach other people it and, and get paid. And that's eventually what I did. I became a sales rep in a company and I got even better at sales because that's all I did all day long then. Then I started my own business where I was teaching this stuff and made a hundred grand in a year, in the first year, in revenue, it's not profit. And then I started studying accounting because I realized that I'm making money and I have no idea where it's going or what's going on because I wasn't tracking any of it. So then I started studying accounting and now um, I'm gonna have my associates in applied science by next month and then I'm moving on to get my bachelor's in accounting because these skills are correlated, marketing, sales, business growth, accounting, these are all the things that like a good CFO, chief financial officer of any company or corporation needs to truly understand. And I've been learning it through hands-on experience, but I wish, I wish that I started learning that stuff when I was 20, because I started just dabbling into sales and marketing about six years ago, when I was 34 years old. And if I would have started learning this stuff when I was 20, it would have been a game changer. When you're young, the game isn't about making as much money as you can. The game is about spending as, as little amount as possible and making sure that you're not taking out any loans and things that you're gonna have to repay when you're older, right? And uh, making sure that compound interest is working in your favor, you're spending less than what you make, and you are focusing on gaining skills that you know will pay you in the future. If you do that now, when you're 20, you may not know the whole path that's ahead of you and where that's going to go, but it's setting you up so that path is moving in the, in the right direction. And you can always make shifts and adjustments to get that path to go exactly where you want when the time comes, but at least you're going the right way. Hope this was helpful for you. Let me know if you want more content like this on this channel. Just let me know in the comments and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Peace.